customers and airlines strong profitability and probably better profitability this year. When you take a look at the manufacturers, we had more than 3,000 orders as an industry and we delivered more than 1,600 airplanes. Wow. How was the year at Boeing? Last year we had 1,355 net orders. We've had record deliveries of 648 aircraft. Think about it, in 2011, we delivered 477 airplanes, so a huge increase in deliveries to meet the demand that we see in the marketplace. With your help, we went through six different rate breaks to get to this high rate of production. And as we look at this year, we're going to increase our rates as well. And then finally, when I was here last year, what were we talking about? We were talking about 787 battery. And you notice I was really particular in those few words <laughs> I did use on the battery. Well, we fought through that issue, we fought through that battle, and last year we managed to deliver 65787. So again, thank you all who played a role in that. Now, as I look at the market over the next couple of years, you know, we see a world economy that for the last few years has been performing under trend. We expect to actually see growth in the world economy this year that will be at or above that long-term trend. We see a market where we expect passenger traffic to grow about 5%. We see, expect capacity to go about 5%, so that's good. We continue to see a market, a cargo market, I should see, where there's some challenges. You know, this is a market that only grew about 1, 1.5% one last year. That's actually good from a couple of years where we saw no growth. Uh, and we do expect is that world economy to come around as trade begins again for the cargo market to slowly but consistently improve. And that's good news for our 777 freighter as well as for the 747-8 freighter. And then finally, from an airline perspective, we're looking at record profitability this year, according to IIATA. You know, one of the interesting things, I think I showed it in the chart before, we had strong profitability last year, and it was led by profitability here in the United States. In fact, about half of the world profitability in terms of the airlines were for the airlines here. So that's a very, very good sign. So, a good market today, a market where we have a big backlog, where we see strong demand for airplanes, and we're increasing rates to make sure that we meet that demand. Now let's take a longer term view of the market and ask ourselves, where is this market headed? You know, I've, I've told the story here before, I've told it many places, that we've been doing the long term forecast of the market for a long time. In fact, in my desk, about third drawer down, I have one of the very first forecasts we ever published, and that was from 1961. And if you open up that forecast, and I don't know if it's page 8 or page 9, it talks about why we do the forecast. And you'll see the reasons we do it today are the same reasons we did it back in 1961. We use it to help support our product strategy and product development. We use it to develop our long-range business plan. And then we share the forecast with you, our suppliers, with our airline customers, to help in your planning process. So what you'll find is the better our forecast, the better our strategy, the better our plan, and the better advice we can give you, our partners. Now, that brings me to my next mid-buster question. Are we doing a good job in terms of the forecast? So we asked Jamie, and we asked Adam to take a look at the data. And here's what the data show. Yes, we have one of the most accurate forecasts in the industry. Uh, it is the most complete forecast in the industry. It has a proven track record, so that's good. But at the same time, the forecast has been a bit conservative. So we've actually seen more airplanes deliver into the market than we thought would deliver. So that's good for our industry. If you take a little deeper dive at the forecast, you'll see, you know what? We really overestimated the demand for big airplanes. We overestimated the demand for regional jets. And frankly, we significantly underestimated the demand for single aisle airplanes. The single aisle airplanes have been so successful because of the strong growth that we've seen around the world with low cost carriers, as well as growth we've seen with the emerging and developing economies. So I think that, yeah, plausible. Mythbusters say this is plausible. We have a good forecast. And we all have to be reminded if your forecast 
doesn't align with the realities of the market, you can make some mistakes, some big mistakes. In fact, you know, Simon, is Simon here today? Yes, he did. Hey, Simon. You know what? At the production rates of the A380 today, you only have 56 more years to make your 20 forecast, 20 year forecast accurate. So you've got a lot of work. <laughs> you know, this is the fun part of this. He'll get us back. So let's look at the forecast. When we develop the forecast, we have to look at all of the factors that drive the marketplace. We have to look at fuel price. We have to look at economic growth. We have to focus on alternate means of transportation, such as high-speed rail. But at the end of the day, we're really focusing on answering two questions. And those questions are, how fast will traffic grow? And then, how will airlines accommodate this growth in their networks? And we have an industry today and in the past, it's been very resilient. Over the last 30 to 35 years, this is a marketplace that's found a way to grow about 5% per year. It's grown despite a number of economic cycles. It's grown despite a number of special challenges that we've had. And as we look into the future, we expect that market to continue to grow about 5% per year for passenger traffic and another 5% per year for cargo traffic. So that's our view of growth. Now we have to answer the question of airline network development. And again, a very clear pattern here. If we look back the last 20 years, as the market has grown, as people travel more, airlines accommodate that growth with more flights to more places rather than flying larger and larger airplanes. Well, what are they doing? They're providing the type of service that we all want more frequent, non-stop service. And we see that today with the 787. Today, we have delivered 118 787s. They make about 250 flights a day. And about 30% of the routes they're flying today and will fly in the next year are new to the market. So they're opening up new markets, they're providing new opportunities for our customers. The airplane is doing exactly what we thought it would. So now that we have our view of growth and network development, that gets us to our forecast. So over the next 20 years, we see a total demand for about 35,000 new airplanes valued at $4.8 trillion. You'll see the largest market in terms of units is for single aisle airplanes. And we, we view the single aisle market or define it as all airplanes that seat between 90 and about 200 passengers. It's the market today for our 737 next generation aircraft. It's the market of the future for the 737 MAX. The biggest market in terms of value is for twin aisle airplanes. And we've divided that segment into three pieces. The small wide body segment, the medium wide body segment, and the large segment. Small wide body, 200 to 300 seats. Think of 787-8-9 A330s. The medium white body market, those airplanes that seat between 300 and 400 passengers, think about the 777 today, the 777 X in the future. And then finally, we do see a significant market for big airplanes, such as the 747-8. Significant in terms of value at about $280 billion, but maybe not so significant in terms of units as 760 aircraft. So that just gives you an idea of where we see the market headed over the next 20 years. Now, as a result of this forecast, then, the world fleet will double over the next 20 years, growing from about 20,000 airplanes today to more than 40,000 airplanes in the future. And take a look at about 60% of the demand in the market will be for growth. The biggest growth markets are in Asia, Latin America, the Middle East. About 40% of the demand in the market will be for replacement. The biggest replacement markets in the United States, Europe, and Russia. Think about 